Today's story is called Charlie's Checklist. The story's by Rory S. Lerman and the pictures are by Alison Bartlett. I hope you enjoy it. Charlie's Checklist. Charlie was born in the countryside, but he had his heart set on living in a big city. When he was old enough to use the telephone and write with a black pen, he sent an ad to a London newspaper. The ad ran that week in the personal com column. Six week old puppy, young, naive and irresistible, looking for suitably enthusiastic owner, must be under 12 and wear glasses. Applicants please send photo and references. Charlie sat and waited for replies. He was the smallest puppy in the litter and the last one out. All of his brothers and sisters had found owners already and he was feeling lonely. He spent his days making daisy chains and sleepless nights counting sheep. But the sheep always fell asleep before Charlie did while he was counting them. Boy, oh boy, he was ready for a change. Then one day, the envelopes started arriving. Small ones, long ones, thick ones, round ones. He had a stack of envelopes so high, he needed a trampoline to reach the letters at the top. He had so many reply replies to his ad that he had to hire an assistant to help him sort through the pile. He chose Chester from the farm next door. Chester had sneaked into the barn the night that Charlie was born. He had been his friend ever since, and he was keen to help out in any way he could. Between the two of them, they organised two piles of letters, no's and maybes. Charlie had a checklist of strict criteria. What is criteria? asked Chester. A, must, a list of must-haves and must-bes, said Charlie. What about this one? asked Chester. I'm Lou. I already have two dogs, two rabbits, two hamsters, one kitten and four fish. I want you too. Charlie shook his head. Must have room for me. Hi, my interests are butterflies and beetles. I collect them in jars. I wear thick glasses and I have big feet for stamping on ants. Charlie shook his head. Must be kind to animals. I'm Roger. I want to be in the circus. I need a partner to join me on my travels. How about it? Charlie shook his head. Must provide me with a stable home. Oh, you are hard to please, said Chester. Charlie felt the search would go on forever. At night, he and Chester counted the stars as they sat on top of the barn. They would laugh about the letters they had read that day and sometimes they would play cards until the birds woke up singing. You won't see many stars in London, said Chester. Oh, stars don't matter very much in big cities, said Charlie. There are so many other more exciting things to look at there. Cars and trucks and tall buildings and loads of different people. Oh, said Chester, I suppose you're right. Finally, after two weeks, Charlie opened up the letter of his dreams. Hi, my name is Naomi. I live on the 15th floor in a penthouse suite. I would love to look after you. I know we'll be the best of friends. I'll take you to all the museums and to the theatre. I'll give you eggnog at Christmas and brush your coat till it shines. Be mine. Charlie ran circles inside the barn after he read the letter. Then he ran outside and ran all around the barn and into the woods and around the trees. He was so excited. Chester giggled when Charlie came back. He was covered in leaves and panting. Isn't she perfect, cried Charlie. Chester looked a little sad. Yeah, Charlie, she seems great. So I guess you'll be leaving soon. Leaving, said Charlie. Oh, so I will. I'll need to pack immediately. Will you help me, Chester? 
Chester agreed and walked back home to find a suitcase. Charlie un couldn't understand why he was dragging his feet. Finally, thought Charlie, I'll have someone who wants me all to themselves. Someone who will love me forever. He decided to check through his list of criteria one more time before he called Naomi. He pulled out his page of must-haves and must-bes. Must have room for me. Charlie looked all around the barn and out into the woods beyond. He could see forever. Must be kind to animals. Charlie remembered the time Chester pulled a stingy nettle from his nose. He had put a big pink plaster on it and special better cream. Must provide me with a stable home. Chester walked back into the barn then. He was carrying a suitcase and a pack of cards. I thought you could take these with you, he said. Maybe you and Naomi could stay up late some nights and play. Charlie now knew why Chester was dragging his feet. His tail dropped between his legs and he felt very silly having overlooked his best friend of all. I've been thinking, said Charlie. I'm not so sure dogs are allowed into museums or theatres in London, and I've heard that eggnog can really upset a dog's tummy. Chester's face turned all at once into one huge smile. Let's keep looking through the envelopes then, he said. Sunset that evening found Chester and Charlie on top of the barn. They were not sorting through envelopes. They were playing cards and starting to count the stars as they appeared in the sky. The envelopes kept coming for Charlie, so many that they filled up the whole barn and Charlie had to move in with Chester. Every day, Charlie's checklist grew longer and longer. Must wear red and white striped dungarees. Must be four feet, three inches tall. Must like playing ball. Must have five freckles on each cheek. Chester lost track of Charlie's checklist, but Charlie never lost track of Chester. And that's the end of Charlie's checklist. Now, I have a few questions for you. So are you ready? And you can pause after each one. First one, what is Charlie? Where does he have his heart set on living? What does he do to try to get there? Why does Charlie feel lonely? Who does Charlie choose to help him sort through all the letters he receives? They organise the letters into two piles. What are the two piles? Charlie has three criteria, three things on his checklist that must be met by a new owner. What are these three things? Charlie then receives the letter of his dreams. Why was this the letter of his dreams and who was it from? Why do you think Chester looks a little sad when Charlie tells him he has found the perfect owner? Chester walks back to his home, dragging his feet. Charlie thinks about this and then realises why Charlie is dragging his feet. Can you explain why? Charlie stays at the farm and then, as the letters keep arriving, he keeps adding new things to his checklist, his criteria. Why do you think he does this? I hope you enjoyed the story as much as I've enjoyed it. Thank you.